Good morning. This is Tuesday, November the 3rd, and we're talking about suffering with Jesus. So let's begin with prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us strength and grace, that gives us boldness in the midst of persecution, in the midst of suffering. Father, I, I pray that you'd help us to understand this principle that as Christians, the world isn't going to accept us. And Father, as Christians, we need to keep our eyes focused on you and not on the world, on your expectations and your acceptance, because they're eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Suffering with Jesus, a topic, as I said yesterday, we really don't want to talk about. We don't like the idea of suffering. We don't like the idea of being persecuted. We don't like the idea of rejection. And yet when we accept Jesus, we're accepting suffering and persecution from the world. We don't see it that much in this country. But brothers and sisters in Christ around the world see it every day of their lives. We talked yesterday about the why. Why are we persecuted? It's on account of the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When Jesus walked in the room, they either fell in love with him or they threw rocks. And that's what happens in society is we're lights to the world. When we walk in the room, people, such as the lady at a restaurant that walked up to me and Brother Clyde Tingen one day, we walked in, we sat down, and we didn't even get to look at a menu before she was standing at our table and said, you two men are Christians, aren't you? We said, yes. We hadn't said anything. We hadn't done anything but just walk in to eat lunch. But something about us told her that we were believers in Jesus Christ. And when we have that appearance and that radiance of the Holy Spirit in us, and we walk in, that's the type of response we might get. But we might get an opposite response too. A response of rejection, a response of hatred and loathing. Because when we live in the power of the Holy Spirit, separated unto Jesus, others become uncomfortable. In Galatians chapter six, we're gonna see the purpose. We saw the why yesterday for per persecution. It's because of the name of Jesus. Here's the purpose today in Galatians chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. It said, It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised. Paul is saying people who, who are fleshly, that's all they have. They don't have the Spirit of God. They're not saved. They live in their sin nature. He said their desire is for you to live such a way also. He said, in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. A lot of times when we compromise as Christians and we try to get along with the world and we begin to act like the world, and then we begin to talk like the world. We use the world's language. We use the world's phrases. We laugh at their jokes. That just makes them comfortable within themselves. And that's what they want. So we're really playing in their hands. But when we live the holy, righteous, justice, <coughs> excuse me, just life that Jesus lived, that makes them uncomfortable. That makes them nervous. Why? It reveals their sin. You see, deep within them, when they see righteousness and holiness and justice and mercy uh, ex exhibited as Jesus did, they know the truth. It is deep within them. They know their sin, and they don't like it. They don't want it revealed. They want to hide it. They want to continue to live it. But when, when God's people rise up and live the life full of the Holy Spirit by faith, that he called us to, it reveals their sin. We don't have to go around pointing our fingers. All we have to do is live the right life before them. They'll, they'll get the picture very clearly. We don't have to be antagonistic. 
we can be loving and kind. But they get the picture. It says here, in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. They may not be persecuted for being a believer in Jesus Christ. To put it in a simpler way that we all understand is, remember when when we were children or teenagers and, and we tried to do what was right and even even as church members, we tried to to live the life. We may not be saved, but we were trying to do right and all. What did the other kids and other teenagers call us? They looked down on us. They called us goody two-shoes. They harassed us. They laughed at us. They do that today. Even though they have these programs in school uh, uh, encouraging children not to do such things, they still do it. Why? There's a void and emptiness in, within each of us. We know our inadequacies. We know something's wrong, but we can't put our finger on it. And as we grow up, it's still there. And as adults, it's still there. So the persecution comes because of the name of Jesus. But the purpose of the per persecution is to put away the holiness, to put away the righteousness, to put away the goodness so that the world would not feel the guilt, the shame, the remorse of their own sin. So the purpose for persecution in this aspect is to relieve the world of its sin that it feels so greatly. Because when we walk into the room, shining as lights for Jesus, all sin is revealed in the hearts of men. I pray that you were strong in the Lord. I pray that you would be blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit, filled with Him, so that you can boldly not only live for Him, but speak for Him, and therefore fulfill the calling upon your life to be a witness for Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, I pray and hope that you will seek him and find him because he loves you so much and he has given so much on your behalf. May we all be blessed as we look to him, whether we're seeking to know him or seeking the filling of his spirit that we might live for him. And may we might, might we be blessed for that. Take care and be safe today.